What up, y'all? In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to take a song at home and make it sound radio ready. The exact professional process to make sure and guarantee every time that it sounds amazing. Now, you may not have known there's a step-by-step -step process. I'm not only gonna show you every single step, I'm going to explain every single step and why it's a necessary part of the process and how to go about doing it. In this video you're about to see is actually taken from my mixing course. People usually pay for this, so but it was so informative and I was so proud of myself when I made it and I shot it and I edited it. I'm like, nah, I have to put this on YouTube. So you guys are getting something that usually costs people at least a hundred bucks just to see this, okay? So here you guys go. I'm Rob Level, this is Smart Rapper, and you're about to see a video straight from that course. I hope you enjoy it. I'm excited for you to see it. You're gonna learn a lot today, all right? Please hit me with a subscribe. Let's get into it. Yeah, 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 I got that hustle and maneuver. Cut the trash, I'll be bad, but I'll be with my shooter. You're gonna open your Pro Tools session. All right. You're gonna follow along with this. I'll show you how to do everything. You're gonna make slight adjustments, and your song is just gonna sound freaking beautiful and amazing. Repeat that process. You're gonna have amazing sounding songs to release anytime you want. You don't have to worry about paying paying somebody else to mix your music. You don't have to worry about there being a clog in the chain. Like, oh, I can't release it because it's not mixed. No, do it yourself. It's done. Do it. Release your music. No more excuses for not releasing music. I used to not release songs because uh, it's not mixed, right? Sh shut up. Do it yourself. Stop relying on other people. If you can do it yourself, you're saving money, you have a skill set, you can make money mixing other people's music, and you can get more music out, Bro. so you can actually take yourself seriously as a music artist. Point blank, period. Once you have mastered these and do them all in the exact order, every time you go to mix a song, it's going to be like, boom, boom, boom. It's gonna, you're just going to knock it out. It's going to sound beautiful. You're going to love it. And now, number one, we gain stage for sweet spotting and headroom for loudness. Basically, where we want to tuck everything down so we have more room to build it with compression and effects and everything else like that. And then you need extra room when it comes time for you to do a master, because the master needs that extra like six decibels to really boost everything up right to the ceiling and just sound amazing and pull out all the amazing qualities that you put into your mix. So you need headroom. So gain staging sets everything at the same even levels. Everything, ad-libs, everything goes in the same level. And then we move to step two. And step two is when we start balancing those levels and say, okay, the voiceovers need to be 10 more decibels down. This needs to be here. The kick should be turned up. This needs to be moved here. And then you start leveling everything out. And realistically, if you look at this, I want to go. 80% of the mix sounding good comes from the volume balance. If you have something that's too loud, it disturbs the vibe of the song. For instance, last night was in the studio, turned down something by two decibels, changed the entire sound of the entire thing. Because when one thing is too loud, it interferes with the way something else sounds. So when you level everything perfectly, it is actually it's legit 80% of how good the song sounds. Do it. 80% is extremely, extremely important that you make sure that you're leveling everything. And so also why we start with this, this is really how it goes. For example, we don't want the ad-libs to be too loud because they'll interrupt the flow of the song. And if we leave the voiceovers too loud, it will take away from the lyric delivery and sound like too much is going on. Easy peasy. Now step three, this is where we're fixing errors. Right now, before we start getting into it, we wanna fix the errors that may exist inside of this. And that's gonna be things such as auto-tuning, fixing it, matching it to the key of the song, Melodyne, and then you're gonna do things such as editing the takes, do comping. Comping is where you may have like five takes of a song. You do like two takes, but you only use like a piece of, of one of the takes and another piece of that, and another one over here, but then you use part of the other take over here in the middle and da da da. That's considered comping. This is completely normal, by the way. Superstars, they'll do 30, 50 takes of a song, dozens and dozens of takes that are fantastic, and the mix engineer decides which one is the best. So that's a big deal. So you can do as many takes as you want. Now also, what you can do here is your timing, okay? When you're mixing a song, it comes down to your timing. If you deliver something late or something too early, you can adjust it and move it back to be on beat properly, or I want to go. you can add more swing to it by slightly putting it off beat. Depends on the sound you want, okay? On the ends of each individual file, you're gonna wanna do the fades so that no, there's no clicks, there's no pops, there's no uh, breaths aren't cut off or breaths you don't want in there. You're cutting out all of these things. You're fixing any air that's potentially in the song. And you're also gonna do things such as utilizing the EQ to get rid of harsh sounding parts of vocal takes. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. We're gonna do what's considered sweeping, okay? So we're gonna sweep through and look for any type of noise that is really irritating our ear, and then we'll cut out that specific part of the sound spectrum to get rid of that harshness noise. Because what's gonna happen is once we start adding these compressors and stuff, all of these errors that we're fixing now, if you don't fix them now, when you add compressors and mastering and limiting, all the errors become very apparent. You know when you record a song and it's not mixed very well, you don't really hear the errors. And I don't know if this happened to you yet because I don't know if you've recorded any songs yet, but if you have never went and mixed a song before it's mixed, you don't hear any of the errors because it's just so muddy, nothing's clean and clear. If you have errors in a song and you go and mix a song properly, your, your ass will hear every 
mess up that you ever did in a whole song. So right now is the time to really go in and clean all that out. Um, you're also gonna do things such as de and noise reduction. de are gonna take out the tss, right? Which is gonna cause a harshness. This all goes here. And then noise reduction, if there's any noises that we need to get rid of, clicks, pops, any other things like that. This is the entire cleanup process so that when you start adding all the other stuff, it doesn't come up inside of it. So this is a very essential part of the whole thing. Yeah. The next step is when we really start getting it, getting into the really good stuff, okay? Number four is gonna come down to we're making the vocals and the overall sound of the song larger than life, utilizing the mix bus, okay? And this is to set the bigger picture of the whole song. This is where your song actually starts really taking form and having the life that it needs in order to really grow and really take you to that next level. What we're gonna do here is, and what I'm gonna show you guys how to do instead of the chorus, I'm gonna show you how to put compressors and what's gonna happen is your entire song is gonna go from like a little bit flat to go whoop, oh. right? And then I'll show you how to add another compressor with a different attack and a different release time. And then what's gonna happen is it's gonna go whoop, it's gonna get even bigger. And then I can even show you how to put a third one on there if necessary. Typically I use two compressors, but I can also show you how to use three. And the song just goes doo -doo -doo -doo, it just starts getting bigger and thicker and fuller. Oh God. And this is also the part that we can add EQ and stuff like that and make, the, make stuff really shine. So the song goes from kind of flat to going whoa, Boom, and now, now you got a freaking what? What the f And then step five, the next thing we do, we start doing is we start shaping the mix. This is where we start EQing things. This is where we start coming in and really making every single track shine. The vocal, perfectly EQ'd. This one, perfectly EQ'd. You start adding effects, you start adding warmth, you start adding color, you start adding all of these things Build that life. shapes the overall mix tone. On top of the fact that it was already already sounds amazing and full here, now you're really like detailing it. Okay, you're shaping how everything is gonna mix together. And now your song's really put together. Like you you feeling good now. Six, now it comes into this part here where we're gonna start adding depth to the song. We're gonna start pushing the vocals back, utilizing reverb. After everything's been boosted up, do we wanna make certain the ad libs sound closer to us? Does it sound better for the song or should we push them further back? Should they go further against this wall? Should they go to the right? Should they go to the left? This is the time when we start doing the stereo imaging and adding the depth and dimension. We're taking it from 2D sound frequency field Whoa. into 3D where it, it comes to life and you can actually hear different elements and the song then really comes together. And we hadn't even touched on this yet because before we were mixing all in mono one track now it becomes stereo it becomes wider thicker fuller and has way more life you already made a fuller you already shaped the tone and gave it life and then now you're coming in here and you're giving it even more life and this is why you guys can see how it really starts to come together big time it's beautiful right yeah. this is just absolutely beautiful i'm so glad the way that i put all this together now that you've put everything in, you added the reverb and it has all this fullness and it's really it just really came together the next thing is rhythm enhancement you know this is completely optional but it's something that i tend to always do you decide if the song could use more sub rhythm or groove and then you apply sub rhythm layers and vocals and other tricks and these are the things that i teach you in the course things like duplicating your vocal tucking it behind your other vocal at such a lowered amount that it really just adds this flavor that nobody can really it's there they can hear it, but they don't even know what that is but it's adding like that flavor or properly utilizing your delays to really make everything punch and putting a delay on a specific track so it's giving it like a perfect additional swing these little freaking crazy secrets Yiddy. on top of that you're gonna have the ability to um i just remember that i have an entire secrets list that i didn't even consider giving you guys for this course because that's my little secrets list i gotta i gotta make that into a book too because it's for things specifically like this these are all these rhythm enhancement things that i've discovered that i'm like whoa for instance great example if you don't know what automation is automation is when you can take the volume of a vocal like let's say that i wrap the word hat Come right i could take automation and turn up just the h where it went like went, hat, hat, and then at would still be normal volume but i can make the h louder well when you're saying a stressed syllable it's, it happens on the drums right well if you wanted to add more flavor and bounce to your song you can actually automate all the words on every quarter every stressed syllable on the quarter or every stressed syllable that you have on the eighths so now these words are slightly increased so it adds more bounce to the song and these are the types of mixed stuff that rappers don't really know but it'll actually sound like you have more flow because of the way you're mixing it and that's what this is we're enhancing your rhythm we're enhancing the way your flow sounds you're actually going to sound like you have more flow if you do this and that's why it's beautiful this is, this is some secret stuff that i have never seen nobody else on the internet even talk about do it okay now step number eight is going to be what i call moment by moment now you want to go through the song piece by piece you're going to listen through it moment by moment and make sure that every part of the song jumps out at the right pace and there isn't a single section in the entire song you want it to make sure that the entire thing is entertaining you nothing stands out and is not good enough nothing is missing from it that you're like ah, that could add that could use something there because if that happens you need to add something there you don't necessarily have to go back and record what i often do is i already use so many vocal instruments that i make myself that i will take maybe an ad lib and i'll 
add an effect to the ad lib and I'll switch it back and I'll put it into this into this dead space over here or I'll take a vocal and I'll, I'll do something to it, I'll morph it and I'll add that and I'll turn that into an instrument that fills these gaps, right? And if you listen to my music, you'll hear how creative I am with a lot of these things. Yeah, if I had the session open, I'd show you right now a perfect example. Yes, sir. Um, actually, I think I should open that. Yeah, 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 I got that hustle and maneuver. Cut the trash, I'll be bad, but I'll be with my shooter. My pinky scratch, don't want that, I drive out from the Uber. Okay, now it's gonna come in place where I'm actually gonna show you guys the inside of my song called I Dug My Hole. And this song, very emotional, but I just wanna show you, like really, like how many vocal instruments that I tend to do. Like all these little pieces that you're seeing here, these are all, these are oohs. Let me show you real quick. Right, so I add those in there, and they chop inside of the hook areas to add more rhythm and bounce. I'm so detailed with this stuff, but look at the, even the way I end the song. Right, so it sounds really cool. I'll show you guys this, like for instance, more uh, things like this. This is actually me. That's me going, and then adding effects to it. You have this angelic violin, but it's actually talked negative 30. Like you can't, it's just a little tiny layer. And these are all vocal instruments that I add into my songs. But I'm gonna show you what I was talking about as far as filling a gap with a, with a sound that sounds amazing. You're gonna hear this, and then you're gonna hear this sound happen right here, okay? If these voices in your head My yeah, it's so hard. I'm sorry, it's so hard. And then get the ooze after it. <laughs> that, ah, that too, that's all me. All that, all these noises are me adding these freaking little layers to the song. Isn't that cool? Okay, now let's get back to the other stuff. I was just showing you guys how you can take these elements and add more rhythm and add more bounce and add more character to your song. And that comes down to being creative. That's all me adding that off the top of my head. What would sound great here? Like, what's gonna, what's gonna really set this off? What's gonna add to the emotion and the feel of this? Let's keep going. So now back to this. You wanna make sure that every single moment of that song is entertaining. You'll notice how I made a noise. I made a sound effect. Even when it was kind of blank, I added the timing of the, the vocal with the effect on it at just the right time. And I mixed it in there and it just added this flavor. It went up, down, up, down, up, down. That song is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it took me a lot of time to create the instruments and decide on the overall sound and the tone that I wanted for it, but it was well worth it. This has turned out amazing. It's a beautiful song. You wanna make sure every single one of your songs has that much vibe, flow, and bounce to it and everything is just there moment by moment cannot go a second without you being entertained or without it, there being a reason for there being a moment where something doesn't exist. Next, we're gonna talk about number nine, the radio ready check. Now you gotta listen to this. This now, your song should be completely finished by the time you got to step eight, you're finished with step eight because now you're just checking to make sure this song is so damn good Baby, baby. You could get, you could send it off and you, you'd be ready to play on the radio. That's what we're talking about right now. You have to ask yourself this. Would someone listening to my song's mix on the radio want to change the station after the first 15 seconds? This comes down to one, your mix, and two, your overall song in general. If your song sucks, a mix is not going to save it, my friend. Okay, sorry. I mean, you already know that though, right? But if your song is freaking amazing, and it's very well mixed, you're good. But let's look at the other side of the spectrum on that. If you have an amazing song, but it's mixed very poorly, it really affects the ability for that song to actually move because the right mix on a song can make the song absolutely beautiful. You need the mix of the song to bring out the vibe and the emotion that you want to convey to the listener. So you have your vocal, you have your sound, you have your tone, the way you delivered everything, and then you have the way that's mixed, which amplifies that delivery to really make the person listening feel what you wanted to make them feel and put them on a roller coaster and a ride that they want to keep getting on over and over again. Then you have to ask yourself whether well, they want to change the station after a verse or a chorus because it's something else too. This goes back to the moment by moment with, with all that, but now I'm wanting you to listen from an outside person's perspective, not just yours. You gotta remember, is this entertaining enough for somebody else to like, trying to be as unbiased as possible? You wanna guarantee yourself that you have mixed it so good that each and every moment of the song is just as engaging, compelling, and captivating as the last of the Listener is consistently saying, what's next? Right? There you guys go for that. Now, guess what number, number 10 is? Yeah, I'm telling Bob. <clears throat> Master the song. There's a whole different ball game, but if you get my mixing course, I obviously also show you step by step just like this. I'll show you how to master the songs. So you guys already have that if you're seeing this video. Unless I put this on YouTube, which I'm really considering because I love how I delivered this. And I think that other people would see this and be like, I need that because I am so proud of this. I'm so proud of this. So anyway, guys, you have the cheat sheet that came with this course. You have the, the mastering, all the steps. You have the entire 60 page book that breaks down. Every, this right here is just me. This is just the outline, people. But I go through this ad.
as I mix songs and I show you how to apply every one of these. I don't just talk about them, I show you in the course. If this is one, if this is one of those situations where I put this on YouTube because I'm so proud of this video, if you wanna get the course, I'll put a link below or you can go to smartrapper.com slash mix and you'll be able to get your hands on this course, all right? All right, guys, I think that that is beautiful. Now you know how everything's gonna break down step by step and this is the exact same pattern we're gonna follow every single time we work on a song. And lucky for you, you're already provided with, all you have to do is open the Pro Tools session and adjust things accordingly as we go through this because I give you the Pro Tools session when you get this course. So you're gonna open your Pro Tools session, you're gonna follow along with this, show you how to do everything, you're gonna make slight adjustments and All your right. song is just gonna sound freaking beautiful and amazing. You repeat that process, you're gonna have amazing sounding songs you can release anytime you want. You don't have to worry about paying somebody else to mix your music. You don't have to worry about there being a clog in the chain. Like, oh, I can't release it because it's not mixed. No, do it yourself, it's done. Release your music, no more excuses for not releasing music. Stop relying on other people. If you can do it yourself, you're saving money, you have a skill set, you can make money mixing other people's music and you can get more music out so you can actually take yourself seriously as a music artist. Point blank period. All right, keep hustling, gang. I'll see you at the top. Yeah, 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 I got that hustling maneuver. Caught the trash, I'll be bad, but I'll be with my shooter. My pink is scratched, don't want that. I drive by from the Uber. Dipping down.